All right, so that was arcane enough. So what the heck is a map, right? Well, in the hierarchy, again, you have a hash map and a tree map. Um, you can use a tree map to implement all the methods for a, a map in log n time. Um, but we're going to assume we're using a hash map in all these discussions about maps, which means that we can do this all in constant time operations. But with the tree map, we can kind of, keep, if things are sortable, we can keep them sorted. So the map interface, the way that works, is that we, unlike the set, have only a small amount of methods. But, which, which is actually very surprising, considering I just said that this is like the most powerful data structure on Earth, right? We only have really five methods to check. Four because, no, three, because three of them are, you know, because two of them are ridiculous, like int size returns the number of key value mappings. Okay, that's pretty obvious and is empty. Oh, that's another obvious. So we only have like three of concern here. Uh, put puts a key value pair into the um, into the data structure. Um, get, given the key, give me the value associated with that key, right? So given like your student ID, get all your information, right? Or when we're creating a new student, here's the student ID, here's the student information, right? And remove, right? Deleting something like that, right? If you delete your account, right? So you say you have an account, the email address is your key, delete email address will basically remove that account information. Okay, um, so um, this mapping over here from the set of keys to the set of values, you would build that with with the following operation. So we've got J, B, S, B1, B2. Jane goes to Jane, Bill, right? This is the same one we did before. B and B2 go to Bill, B1 goes to Ban uh, Bob, S goes to Sam. So because we have a key and a value, and they can be completely different data types, as we'll see, we have to use two generics. The generic for, and what goes first is the generic for the key, and the value goes second. So this is mapping one string to another string, right? So we're putting J and Jane into the set, B and Bill, S and Sam, B1 and Bob, B2 and Bill. And again, you can have the same so two things can have the same value, but you can't insert a key more than one. So a one a map dot get b one will return Bob, right? Getting the value associated with b one, that's Bob, so we'll return Bob. If we get Bill, we ask for the value associated with Bill. Well, we check this set and it says, hey, there's no Bill there and there, um, so return null. Bill's a value, not a key, so you can't get that. Um, so now the big thing here, again, if I were to do put B Billy, B would now point to Billy instead of uh, instead of having B point to two different things. Okay, that's kind of a big concept there, but we'll see it. But you'll, it becomes clear when when we cut up a real example. You can only implement, uh, you know, one. You can only do. Um, sorry, only you can only have one instance of each key. Each key is unique. Right now, on if you're working on the index tree assignment, if that's one thing I'm still giving out, which I am at the semester I'm recording, this is actually kind of the ideal data structure you would use for building that instead of a uh, instead of a tree. Um, and we're going to kind of see an example of that. Um, in the next video. Okay, so we're going to go over solving a couple problems now using a hash map.